Welcome to Raw and Prophetic with your host, Apostle Katrina Garrett. Raw and Prophetic is where we are real, we are anointed, we are women, and we are prophetic. On this podcast, you will be encouraged through the Word of God to step in your purpose-driven assignment from the Lord and to be inspired and encouraged to be all that God has called you to be. So, welcome to our podcast. Here is your host, Apostle Katrina Gary. Well, good morning to you. Welcome to Raw and Prophetic, where we are real, anointed women, and we are prophetic. Blessings and peace be unto you on this beautiful day. I am so excited. I am so ready to get back into where I am supposed to be. But blessings and peace to you. Um, I know it's been a while, and I've done a few podcasts since I've been here in Jacksonville, but, you know, my my husband and I, God just had us in a a place. I'm just going to say that. He just had us in a place. And he's really been doing some things within and within us. And so we are excited to say that we are going to be moving back home to uh, Panama City, Florida this coming week. And um, we're going to be relaunching our ministry fearlessly kingdom ministries and so we are so excited about what the lord is doing in this hour because he is doing great and mighty things and so i just want to come on today and i want to encourage you in our matchless name of jesus christ be encouraged in this hour because we are living definitely in some dark days we're living in some dark times but jesus is the light of the world and you are a part of his flame so we must continue to burn for him we must continue to be ignited and on fire because the lord is pouring his spirit upon us and he is preparing us for such a great work amen and so today i want to encourage you um, because as I was meditating this morning and I was in prayer, I uh, was reading in Second Corinthians and it was talking about the God of all comfort. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord, he ministered to me and he was saying, I want you to encourage my people because many of them have gone through some fiery trials and many of them are going through some fiery trials and many of them are experiencing um, um things right now that they feel like they they really need to be encouraged because they're, 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 the enemy is trying to set a a place of bitterness and resentment because what I'm doing, I am developing them to become more able to stand. I'm developing them to be more faithful and I'm also developing them to, them to be more bold. And so in the midst of what you're going through, don't get deceived by the enemy that everybody else is doing great, but I'm going through all of this, you know, why does my life seem to be falling apart? Well, the Lord is saying to you to this morning that your life is actually falling into place because he's getting you positioned. He's getting you suited up and ready for a good work. Because let me tell you something, we're living in a time now where everybody's called to be a pastor, a preacher, a apostle, whatever, you know, gift they want to operate in. But there's still a a, a training, a boot camp training that you have to go through. The Bible says that we are tested. The scripture says that the Lord tests us to see where we are. And sometimes it seems like your life is falling apart while everybody's life is all together. And the enemy will deceive you into thinking that you're being punished or maybe God is not pleased with you. Just because you're going through a trial or a tribulation doesn't mean that God is not pleased. Actually, it's reversed. God is very pleased and he knows that you are able to come through. 
So I want to read the scripture to you in 2 Corinthians 1 and 3. It says, Blessed be the God of our Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Verse 5. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. And I'm going to stop there. I'm going to stop right there. So as we, as I, you know, as I said, I'm going to stop right there. As we read, you know, um, Paul was talking to the church of Corinth and he was talking about, um, first of all, he acknowledged, blessed be the God of our father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. He, he recognized that through his sufferings, he was not alone because he, the first thing he acknowledged was we serve. The father of mercies and the God of all comfort. It said all comfort of all comfort, no matter where you are in your life right now, no matter what you are going through right now, you might be, you might be dealing with grief. You may be dealing with a loss. You might not know how you're going to make it in this world today because you're struggling. You're working from check to check. And every week it seems like, you're wondering, how am I going to make it? How am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to feed my children? You're stressed out on your job. You know, you don't know if you're going to have a job because they're constantly making changes all the time. They're always threatening that they're going to lay people off. They're always making these, uh, you know, comments about, you know, um, you, you might be, I, I, I'll say this. Let me, let me just say this. I remember I was, uh, yesterday I was talking to my husband and my ex-husband. We were all talking on the phone and, um, and both of them were at a company called restaurant and, and it's been around for over a hundred years, this company. And, you know, they were just talking about, you know, how a lot of people were shocked that, that the company closed, but at the same time, the workers weren't really shocked because for years and years and years, they've always heard. I remember when my ex-husband got hired on, they go close paper mill. They're going to close the paper mill because it was a paper company. It was, they made paper. And when my husband, you know, when I got divorced and I got remarried, my husband got on with the paper mill as well. And when he got on, people always were saying, oh, don't get that job because it's going to close down. It's going to close up. It's going to close up. And people always spoke about the mill sh uh, shutting down for years. And with my ex-husband, it was about 30 years of employment for him. But with my husband... It was 20 years or 21 years of employment, 21 years of employment before the paper mill actually did shut down. And it also taught me that um, it taught us that 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 in the midst of it, though, when we were talking about it, God comforted us through it all. Nobody lost their mind. Nobody made nobody. You know, even both of them, both, both, both my husband and ex-husband was talking about how they have not heard of anybody giving up, committing suicide, losing life, going into depression, whatever the case. But everybody is still living and making it. You know why? Because we serve a God of mercies and we serve a God who comforts us all through any tribulation. And let me tell you why that is so. Because if you look at what I read to you a few minutes ago, it talks about how Paul was saying that, you know, we know that God comforts, but he said, but Paul learned through their troubles, through the trouble that you're going through, you are able to comfort somebody else. He said, with the trouble, trouble with the comfort, which we ourselves are comforted by God. So sometimes you got to ask yourself, if you're going through something, could it possibly be that your trouble is actually birthing your ministry? Because 
Because you can't, let me tell you something what I've learned in life as a human being. Human beings have to, have to experience some things. And, and so if you're going through something, you're showing somebody how to walk through this fire by the spirit of God. Where somebody else might be walking through the fire through the flesh, through the, the through the carnal mind, through through their own thinking. But when you start showing someone how to be able to stand and not lose their mind, you're showing them how to trust in the God of our comfort. You're you're showing them how to stand in the midst of trouble. Because most of the time People break when trouble arises. Nobody, everybody wants their life to be a perfect house with a white picket fence going around it and a dog. And and we, and we live in this world that we'll have trouble. Everything ain't going to always be perfect. Now, let me tell you something. Yes, yes, we do have times and seasons where we're happy and we don't have any problems. But as a Christian, you get you get very, I ain't going to say you get very few of those. You go through a lot of things as a Christian because we live in a world that's full of darkness. And so you are a target for Satan. You become a target for him to attack because Satan's main purpose is to discourage you. So you don't encourage people through your trials and adversities. You know, I can give you a perfect example. When my husband lost his job, we moved to the Jacksonville. And when we moved here, we were moving here because we were trying to follow his former employment. And he did get on with them. But it did not work out because of jealousy. And so my husband said, well, I'm just going to get out of the paper business and just go into something else. And he did. And it seemed like my husband was going from one job to another. I was working. I wasn't making very much money. And then when I got another job, that job became oppressive because they wanted me to do a three man job and it was just me by myself. And so we were going through a lot. And so in the midst of it, we had to put our faith in our comfort in the Lord because we had to trust him in this. And so while we were here, you know, we were seeking the Lord and we were saying, okay, God, you know, um, what do you, what, what are we, what are we here for? You know, and so we got a word from another apostle. Uh, she called us and she told us that she had a word for me and my husband. And this is this was actually around the time when we first moved to Jacksonville. And she said that the Lord told her that he was not finished with us in Panama City. And that we were to go back and complete. Now, I'm going to tell you how I know that it was God, because the Lord told us that we would raise up a leader to lead the ministry to. And so, um, he told us that, you know, years ago and, and we've never spoken that really to anybody. My husband mentioned it somewhat yesterday when he was ministering online, um, you know, yesterday on Sunday, but you know, because he had a dream and you know, it was so funny when my husband had that dream because that, that brings, that brings us the, the confirmation that we're in the right place. And so when she gave us that word, I'm going to be honest with you. I was kind of like, Oh God, I don't really want to see it because I don't think we're going to go back. But I, I, I received it. We received it. And we said, well, Lord, you know, whatever your will is. And so I knew it was the Lord because she did not know. She did not know what God had told me, my husband to do. And so we were just like, okay, well, we we didn't know how we, we, you know, we didn't know we were going to move back or we were going to be traveling back from Jacksonville back and forth. We really did not know exactly at that time. But when we began to pray, we started seeing things, you know, happening that, that caused us to move back. And for one, I'm going back to to care for my parents as well. So we're, we're, we're going in the right direction. But while we were here, we were facing many, many, many discomfort things that, that would cause us to become not comfortable. And through it all, my husband and I had to stand. 
We basically was on a sabbatical because even now I, I didn't have the time really to come on and minister. Jacksonville is big for one. And so my job was about 30 miles away. So you, you're looking at an hour drive within my day and then getting home. And I was so exhausted from working and, and, um, you know, but I thank God for it because it paid the bills because I, I made pretty decent money. But at the same time, I just, you know, rested in the, in, in, in the Lord, just rested and did what he, you know, ministered while I was there. There were a couple lives that he had me to touch while I was there. And there were a couple lives that touched me, a couple of people who touched me. And so in the midst of it, I, I, what I learned and what my husband, and I learned was through the trials that we experienced here in Jacksonville, we understood the God of all comfort because only God comfort us. We even had um, uh, some uh, challenges with our health and God has healed us. He has, he has healed us because you know, we didn't want to call anybody and say, this is what's going on with our health. But God has healed us. We didn't want to trouble anyone because the Lord has healed us. And so through all of that that we have experienced here in Jacksonville, we understand that, that he is first of all the God of mercies. And he's the God of all comfort. My husband experienced losing a loved one. You know, and, and we moved here when my husband first lost his mother. But I watched my husband walk in the grace of God. Did that make him some strong man that, oh, he's so strong and mighty? And No, my husband is weak. I'm weak. We are weak. We are weakened vessels. That's just being used by the spirit of the Lord. And I watch my husband have his peace. I watch my husband have his joy. And I remember when me and my husband was going through some trials here. I told my husband, I said, Tommy, I don't understand. I don't know if I can get through this. And he said, Katrina, he said, I'm going through a lot as well. He said, I lost my mother. And he said, but the one thing I am going to do, and it ministered to me, he said, is I'm going to live. He said, I'm going to live. He said, I can, I can sit and I can dwell on it. He said, yes, I have memories, you know, cause I said, Tommy, things are so different now. It's not like it was in the past. I want to go back to the past. And my husband was like, but Katrina, you can't change it. You can't turn it around. He said, but what you can do now is live. And I want to encourage somebody right now under the sound of my voice, whatever you are experiencing. And I know that many of you probably will say, well, you don't understand. You're not in my foot footstools. You're not in my shoes. You're not, you, you don't, it, it's not happening to you, baby. We all going through something, but I want to encourage you today that there's a God of all comfort who loves you unconditionally. And yes, you might have lost somebody dearly that you loved. You might have gone through some things. Even yourself, you might be dealing with an illness. You might be dealing with a sickness. And instead of focusing on the God of our comfort, you are allowing the enemy to cause you to turn against God, to turn against Jesus, and to blame him for your problem. And you're looking at other people, especially on social media. You're looking at other people being thinking that their lives are so great and you and you are and why you and you're victimizing yourself. That that you've allowed the anger and the resentment and the unforgiveness and all that stuff to brew up in your spirit. And this is why you are battling today. But I want to encourage you that if you begin to focus on the Lord. You begin to pick up your Bible and begin to read and to begin to pray and begin to praise the Lord. Praise Jesus in the midst of your trial. The God of all comfort will come and swoop you 
and bring you the peace. He'll bring you that love and that joy. And you'll be saying, how in the world am I able to still smile? How in the world am I able to still laugh? How in the world am I able to still go on after everything I've lost? Because we serve a God of all comfort. And when it says comfort, I don't care what you've been through. You might have been molested. You might have been abused as a child. You might have been beaten. You might have been, you might be in an abusive relationship now where you're being beaten to a pulp. But if you grasp hold of the word of God and grasp hold that Jesus Christ is there and only he and he alone can bring you the peace and the, and the, and the restoration that you need, honey, you, you'll find yourself in a place that you never could imagine. And then the windows of heaven will begin to open and then the blessings will begin to flow because you understand that in spite of what I've gone through, I serve a God of all comfort. If you are in a place where you're sick, don't be bitter that you're sick. Don't say, well, why I got, why I got chosen to be sick. Maybe God chose you to show that he's a healer. See, so some, some people miss it. They miss it because they're so focused on their circumstance. And I had to learn that. Even me, I had to learn how to stop focusing on my circumstance and focus on Jesus Christ. And that's what gave me the peace that I didn't walk away from God, that I didn't walk away from the word. No, I might not be on him ministering, but I did not walk away from the Lord. I didn't turn my back on Jesus. I didn't give up. I didn't say, well, you know what, Lord, you know, forget it. I just don't care. No, I kept reading my Bible. I kept seeking the Lord through all of this. Just because I wasn't coming on social media and I wasn't ministering doesn't mean that my relationship with Jesus stopped because it didn't. There's sometimes a God to have us to go in a place of silence because there's something that he wants to do in us. Especially as preachers, we think we got to keep going, 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 going. No, because even Jesus went in a place of solitude. It was times that he went into silence. He was, he was like, okay, I'm going to go here and get some quietness so I can be refueled. This is why so many ministers have nothing to pour out because you're so busy running, 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 proving to people I'm called by the work that I do, but you're not allowing God to pour into you. You're not allowing him to, to, to pour back into you because let me tell you something, pouring out is, 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 is a lot. You have to deal with people who don't like you. You got to deal with all sorts of spirits and all sorts of warfare, spiritual warfare and things like that. You have to get to a place sometimes where you just got to go silent so that we can really hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. If we talking all the time and always going, going, how we hearing from God? So it's okay. If you're not doing anything right now in ministry, you still called. And I'm not saying it because I did it. There's a lot of people who don't go all the time. I don't go all the time. And I'm okay with that because I know that I want to be sent. I want to be sent. I don't want to advertise myself that I'm just this anointed woman of God and you need me at your church. No, I want to, I want to be sent. So when the Lord sends me with a word in my belly, It's going to thrust you to go to the next place in Christ. Not because you want to say, oh, she was so anointed. She was so powerful. Y'all got to get beyond all that stuff. You got to get beyond all that stuff because all this power and all this kind of, I'm not against the, the, the movement of the spirit of God. I'm not against it. As a matter of fact, when I do see movements, I don't say one word about it. I don't say whether it's God or it's not. If it's not God, I don't say anything. You know why? Because I do not want to be held accountable for blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Okay? Because that's an unforgiven sin, and I don't want to be held accountable. So I just say, you know, if I kind of discern my spirit that ain't God, I leave it alone. Because one thing I have learned, you guys, exposure 
doesn't always come by what we speak or say. Sometimes exposure is just being who you are. How do you expose darkness? Being who you are. Walking in the light. You don't have to point at this individual and say, they are not of God. Just keep being who you are in Christ. People ain't stupid. They can recognize good and evil. Good and evil is, is evident, man. We, you can see it. And people deep down know that who's good and you know who's righteous and who's not. Knows a lot of times they will not give you the credit. Low, a lot of times they will not acknowledge you. But there will come a time they will. There will come a time they will. Because people watch. They watch for a long time. And so, you know, they know, and, 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 and I'm going to say this, the Bible says, this is what the scripture says, the Lord knows who are his. He said that he will separate the wheat from the tear. He said, let the wheat and the tear grow together. So let me tell you, stop always talking about you want to put people out and all this other kind of stuff. No, one thing about it, I'm not want to put nobody out in the church, but I'm going to tell you with a respect will lie. You can come to church all you want to, but when there's a time where, you have to address somebody for their conduct, address it. But at the same time, you can't kick them out or put them in that because one thing I've learned, they, if they leave, they leave on their own. But one thing I have learned, the Lord knows who are his. Let him do the separating. And so in the midst of what we, you know, what I'm talking about here, be comforted by the Lord and know that he's with you. Know that he's not, he has not left you. He has not forsaken you because he is the God of all comfort. He is the God of all comfort and he will comfort you. He'll bring you peace. He'll bring you joy, but you can't get that until you learn how to rest in Christ. We get to learn how to rest in Christ. We want to, you know, Jesus said, I am the Sabbath. <laughs> he said, I'm the Sabbath. And we have to learn how to rest in Christ and stop trying to do everything in our own strength. Because to be honest with you guys, a lot of these ministries that we see, you know, like I heard a guy talking the other day about the church and how nobody is preaching against homosexuality and sin and nobody's preaching against you know shacking and nobody's preaching against you know any type of sin they're all preaching about how good God is and and how you're blessed in favor and I said that's a lie because there are people who are preaching true the problem is and he, and he made and he, and he made it very clear I don't go to church that's crazy and when you stand before God and you say that to him He's going to show you the righteous people he put before you because God is not dumb. Jesus said he will not return until his word is preached throughout the world. So in other words, no man, no man or woman will be able to stand before the Lord and act like you didn't see anybody who lived right for Christ. That's a lie. You rejected those people because you want to live a double standard life. And so you think you're going to go to heaven by just giving God praise? You are deceived. Okay? you deceived. God is a God of all comfort. And, and, and the ones that you saw that was going through and suffering, you was like Job friends. Oh, they going through because this and this and that. You see, you didn't pay any attention to the true saints who didn't have that lavish lifestyle. They're going through fire. Every time you turn around, there's something going on with them. You, you, you ignored those type of people because you looked at it as God was not with them when he was. They was the ones that were strong. They was the ones that could, that can get you to the next place you need to be. You know, that's why we go through trials and tribulations. How we know that God is able? You ain't going to know that he's a healer unless you sick. A lot of people be singing songs, oh, Jesus is a healer. How you going to know unless you get an illness and he heals you from it? How you going to know that he's, he's Jehovah Jireh, that he provides unless you lose your job? Baby, me and my husband know that he's Jehovah Jireh. We know for a fact that he's Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh here in Jacksonville. My husband was in between jobs. We didn't know how we was going to pay our bills. We paying $1,700 a month for rent. 
And baby, somebody came up to us and said, Lord told me to give y'all two grand, $2,500, to pay all y'all bills for the month. They gave us almost $3,000. Don't tell me that God is not able. And at that time when my husband was going through, you know, you know, you know he was in between jobs, I'm crying out to the Lord, Lord, what are we going to do? And all this. And I and I could feel where, where I wanted to slip into a place of despair and bitterness. But when in the midst of that, I, I, I called on the God of all comfort. And you know, when I cried out to, to God, when I really cried out to Jesus about our finances, I had peace. I came home and I had peace. There were times I would cry a little bit, but my husband can tell you, I'm a type of person I used to worry myself almost to death. And worry will, will make you sick. Worry will make you sick. Worry can make, can make you get all sorts of illnesses. But how would I have known that he's the God of all comfort unless I had to walk through that trial? And not only um, at that time I learned that, but the church that we were going to, the saints of God get, brought us comfort. And they reassured us that he is there. They reassured us that this too shall pass. They reassured us that, that it's okay. You are still anointed by God. Sometimes as a preacher or minister, you feel like, Lord, what did I do? That's the first thing we think when we go through something. What sin have I committed? We try so hard to live right and think that we won't go through no trouble. That's not true. Don't be deceived by that. Because that, that's, that, that's, a, that's a form of manipulation. I'm going to live right. I'm going to pray. I'm going to fast until I'm blue in the face so I won't have no problems. No, baby, the problem's still going to come. But that fasting you were doing, that praying you were doing, that's what's going to bring you comfort because you're going to have peace in knowing that God is able. When it don't look good, when it don't look like it's going to turn around, you understand. And even if it don't turn around, you still will have your mind. You still will be at peace because God is with you. Jesus is there. That's how you know. Praise God. So I'm so blessed and excited. Um, thank you so much for listening to uh, our broadcast, Raw and Prophetic. I'm so excited to be back coming to you daily with a word from the Lord. Praise God. Um, and so I'm going to be coming on all the rest of this week, but we're going to be moving at the end toward the end of the week. And I will be broadcasting uh, Monday through Friday. But toward the end of the week, um, I'm gonna see if I can try to do it maybe the night before we move back. But if not, then I'll you know I'll keep going until the day that we move. And guess what? I'll be back on the following week. But I'm so excited being a part of this great uh, movement of God. This podcast has been on for some years now. I want to say to all my listeners, I want to thank all of my listeners for listening. We have over. 20 uh 2000 and something downloads that's a good thing when you're in the podcast so i thank you for all the all of you listening to the podcast we have over 2000 and something downloads and i'm so excited about that and there are people who are listening globally um there are people who are listening all over the world and um because you know on the statistic thing you can kind of see where the listeners are are at and so i just want to take this opportunity to thank you for listening to raw and prophetic and i pray that this brings you um you know peace and clarity and comfort and and encouragement and so um please if you want to reach out to me please send me an email at raw and prophetic dot uh raw, i'm sorry raw and prophetic at gmail.com you can email me uh prayer request um or you can just go uh to my facebook page under uh, raw and prophetic and just click on the, the the website and you can leave an email there amen and so um i'm just so grateful and thankful for all that god is doing i pray that this 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 uh, podcast will be a blessing unto you and i pray the lord will give you peace and he will strengthen you because that's what we need in this hour we need strength we need encouragement we need to strengthen and encourage each other and so I am so excited to be back. Ladies, I'm excited. And some gentlemen, praise God. So as I always love to tell you, I want you to be blessed. And I want you to be made 
后